this. <laughs> Are we ready to go? Okay, here we go. Hey everybody, Alan Quarry here for AQ's Blog and Grill. I'm really excited to have Lee Odin here as our guest. Lee was one of our speakers today at Uber Flip uh, Experience here in Toronto. And Lee just crushed it. I mean, I think in stand-up, they call it killed. You killed today, Lee. So tell us what we were talking about this morning, because it was a, a great topic. It's three things, Alan. We were talking about bacon, beards, and cats. Well, not cats, influential not cats. cats. Well, influential B2B cats. And there was bacon donuts involved somehow in this as well. Yes, well, you know, I wanted to add some incentive to the sharing that was probably already gonna happen and uh, use bacon and beards as a metaphor to inspire giving away some bacon flavored donuts to the best tweets. And here in Canada, donuts is a huge incentive. And I think that's really why when they do the evaluation after this conference, Odin is gonna be like through the roof. Absolutely. I mean, Mitch Joel was okay. <laughs> Mitch Joel was amazing. He didn't have any donuts. No, no, that's true. But you know, I hear Anne is giving things away as an incentive here in a few minutes. So, you know, it's catching on. Well, I think you're a trailblazer. You're definitely a thought leader. So, what were we talking about this morning? Because I think yeah. it, it really did hit home for me um, on influential or influence marketing. Sure. So, what is it that's so key about having a good influence marketing strategy? Well, so many companies are challenged to reach their customers because of things like ad blocking, um, consumers aren't trusting formal marketing communications and that sort of thing. So how is it that brands can reach you know, new audiences in a meaningful way? And other studies that I cited show that people trust peers, they trust experts. So influencer marketing is a way to interject a voice of customer, credibility, subject matter expertise into brand content that facilitates distribution because the influencers will help you promote. Right. Um, it adds quality you know, and deep expertise if you have a subject matter expert helping you. So it achieves a lot of the benefits that you would hope for and maybe people used to be uh, accustomed to when inbound was right. new, yes. but it's not so new anymore. No, isn't it amazing that you and I are living in an age where inbound marketing, which is probably less than 10 years old, is now trying to stay ahead because they're kind of mature. It is, yeah, and, and you know, there's a lot of value in the notion that customers will educate themselves yes. to the logical conclusion that you are the right solution for them. I mean, that is a wonderful sales cycle, yeah. right? And we've heard the stats, people bringing themselves 60, 70, 80% through the sales cycle, but we're competing with so many other things. Information overload being the biggest. Absolutely. Thing. So working with influencers is a way in which you can create a quality experience and also the content you co-create with an influencer yes. is also a great way to create a relationship with that influencer, especially right. if the influencer is a prospect, right? I love that part of your presentation where you talked about the participation of the prospect. I don't believe in the four Ps of marketing anymore. I don't know if I ever did. However, the fifth P might be positioning, and the sixth P is participation. Sure. So you really nailed it there. Now, the other thing you were kind of summed up with were kind of the, the things around the R's. And you talked about, well, you talked about relevance, you talked about resonance, and then the last R and reach. And reach. Reach, yeah, there's some criteria for identifying, well, which influencers should we work with? Who's the right match, and do they have what we need? And so you've got to identify that they're topically relevant. So. As a brand you want to, what do you want to be influential about? Find people who already have that influence. So relevance is key. Their network size or reach is also important, but so is resonance. And resonance is a reflection of how well their community responds to the things right. that they publish. Yeah. So what's the future, Lee? I mean, it's, it's pretty bright for guys like you and I. <laughs> But if, I agree. You know, so, but if you were a young person coming into the business of building brands, building relationships, what aspect of the of the game would you want to play in? What's where's the real happening going to be? Data. Data. Um, I think so. I'm I'm a firm believer still in art science of our craft, and so data informed storytelling, data informed experiences, and the cycle of optimization that comes from hypothesis, implementation, data collection, and then refinement, I don't think that's ever gonna go away, but our ability to execute using various mar 
uh, marketing technology tools right. is what is changing. There's more available to us right. to, to, to uh, provide a really great and optimized sort of experience. Yeah. Again, I mean, I used to, well, used to, up the last two years I've been telling people, please concentrate on the ROI, the return on involvement. I'm now asking people to emphasize return on implementation. Sure. Because if you don't execute. Right, exactly. And that's why, I mean, you'll, you'll hear Ann uh, Hanley, who I, who I was just talking to, she talks a lot about, you know, you really have to get the fundamentals down. Like, slow the heck down, people. Right. Because the best idea is worthless if it's not executed or implemented. And so there's a lot of people chasing shiny objects in our industry, and they're not necessarily bringing the craft and the quality of execution. And so therefore, they try a new thing out and it doesn't go so well, and they say, well, that that's no good. Right. And really, a tool or a platform is only as good as the skills of the person using it. Right. So we would do well to get better at using the tools, I think. There you go. If we slow down and if we're patient. Now, Lee, uh, as the top dog at top rank, <laughs> that should be on your business card. Anyway, you have the most generous uh, sharing of knowledge and insight in the business. I mean, you, if you're not going to the top rank uh, website, blog, blog yeah. you, really you're missing out because this guy has just put his presentation here up on uh, SlideShare slide and it's incredible. I read uh, your blog every second day. And why is that? Because I'm selfish and I want to <laughs> and I want to do better. And I won't do better unless I listen to this guy more often. So well, Lee, thank you for generous. being here. Thank you, Alan. Appreciate and, uh, it. And uh, where did you get those bacon donuts? <laughs> <laughs> From Uberflip, thankfully. Uberflip went out and found them and drove them in and provided them for me to give away. And a I fully, thank you to them for doing that. A fully integrated solution. Absolutely. Great. Thanks, everybody. AQ's Blog and Grill.